Well, boys, welcome back to the channel, and I'm sorry if you can't hear me, I do not have a mic on, so I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder, but this is just for the intro. Um, this is a little bit more of an informational video, no ratting is going to be involved in this video, and um, it's just to really help you guys who are interested in a few little things. This video is about what to look for when buying a used snowmobile, and if you can't tell, we have a used snowmobile right here, and this one was actually bought new. So this is a snowmobile that was bought brand new, and this one was bought used. So I'm going to go into some things you should look for when buying a used snowmobile, and uh, yeah, that's what this video is going to be about. So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, and let's get right into this video. Okay guys, so now I'm going to try to sit here for a little bit and just go over a few things that you should be looking for when buying a used snowmobile. And um, we'll start with just number one. I always look at the track, guys. The track is a big thing to look at when um, buying a used snowmobile because oftentimes they will be worn. And if they're really worn, don't have that be something that turns you away from that snowmobile because that happens with a lot of snowmobiles. A lot of snowmobiles in this early 2000 era or even 80s, 90s, early 2000s, anything around there will most likely have a worn track unless it has been replaced. But if it is worn and if you are getting a good deal on it, it might still be something to look into just to buy a track for it. Because you could probably get into a track for maybe $350 to $400 at just a uh, one inch lug track. If you're looking for a bigger lug, so it'd be anywhere from like, what, $600 to $1,000. But if you're just going to get into a new track, probably $350 to $400. So always inspect your track. Always make sure that it is in good shape and uh, it just looks good and... Uh, no big holes, no big rips or tears, no lugs missing, anything like that. That's a good thing to look at is the track. Um, next thing would be just inspect the skis because the skis are another big thing that can be worn. Just the plastics can be broken if you, you guys can't see but on the, uh, I'd say your left, the ski over there on this SXR is actually the back of it is broken, which is really weird, but it is, I don't even know how you do that, but it is. Um, that's not something to be turned away to turn away from the sled either because that is something that's fixable and if you don't want to fix it you can also just leave it and it'll work just fine and then if you switch to under the skis now if you're looking at the bottom of the skis there is a metal piece on there called a carbide and there'll either be one or two under each ski and that is simply just for turning and for the ski to sit on so it's not just sliding on the um on the plastic or metal ski itself it actually has a carbide underneath which helps you turn and just maneuver better and most likely, if it is an older sled like this, they will be worn. And that's just something that you're probably going to have to replace. It's probably about $30 to $60 to get new carbides. It's not insanely expensive, but it is still a cost to take into consideration. And next, let's just talk about the just undercarriage and all the plastics of the snowmobile. So it is common that they will have... Um, that they will be broken or there's some sort of scratch because snowmobiles they just when they get used they get scratched they might get hit it just depends but if you do see in any of this undercarriage down here any big cracks or breaks or holes or anything like that make sure you inspect inside the engine to make sure it hasn't been hit head on or any big collisions because usually you'll be able to tell if you go inside the engine and everything's uh, like shifted and just crooked then that might be something that's that's not good. You might want to walk away from the sled then. But if it's just plastics that are broken or something like that, that is easily fixed. You just want to make sure that it's not leading to something bigger, like a bigger problem. And uh, yeah, so just look, expect, inspect the plastics, check them over, make sure they're um, in good shape. And stickers and all the like different stuff that's on the plastics can also be worn just from over time. They'll get worn from scratches and all kinds of stuff. They just get worn. Now, if you want nice plastics, if you're looking for a mint sled, that might be a problem. But for most people, it's not. And then other things to look at is these control arms here in the front. If you've hit something and the plastics... So you can still have hit something and the plastics may not have been damaged. Because you might have hit something in these areas where the plastics are not the first thing that it would hit. So if you hit something on the sides here, it would hit the um, control arms first. So you always check control arms to look for any big doinks or any big bends in them. If they're bent, that definitely means they've hit something. So that is also a easy fix. You can either bend them back sometimes or just buy a new control arm. Or, yeah, control arm, sorry. Um, I always check suspension to make sure the suspension goes up and down correctly. If you hear any grinding noises or weird noises, uh, suspension should usually be fairly quiet. So when you're lifting it up and pushing it back down, it should not make any loud or like, grinding noises. 
If it does, that usually means there's something wrong with it. And just check headlights, taillights, make sure all those things work and um, stuff like that. Other things would be all the wiring and so like heated grips, make sure heated grips work because it's a pain to not have heated grips. They really do help. And uh, if it has heated throttle, make sure you check that. Anything like that. Uh, gauges, I always check the gauges. That's something that is easily forgotten because if you don't take it for a test ride or if you're just like, just having too much fun, you might forget to glance down at the gauges to make sure they work. And speedometer, uh, the, fuel, the fuel gauge, the RPM gauge, all those different gauges might not work. And uh, check the mileage, obviously check the mileage because an older sled can get to very high miles but just remember that a two-stroke and a four-stroke are completely different snowmobiles. So you can have way more miles on a four-stroke and be just fine and have that exact same amount of miles on a two-stroke and it'll probably blow up. Because two-strokes are not meant to have as high of mileage as four-strokes can. Uh, four-strokes can probably go up to like 20,000 miles or something. I don't actually know, so don't quote me on that. But they can have way more miles than a two-stroke. Two strokes, I would probably turn away from a sled if it had over 10,000. That's just me personally. Some people wouldn't. It really depends on the care that they have been, um, how much care they have received and how they have been stored, all that kind of stuff. So those are all things to check over. Just even check the seat for rips or tears or anything like that. The leather products might be torn. Now that is an easy fix. If it's just the seat cover, you can easily get a new seat cover. But if the foam itself is damaged, a seat is a lot more expensive. Um, I'm gonna try to think other things to check really There's not a lot of other stuff. Obviously if they allow you I always take something for a test drive because that is where you'll find a lot of uh, Broken things if there are because test drives really show you that it'll drive it'll handle well all those things um, Another good thing to do is bring a compression tester with you that pretty much just tests how much compression is each in each cylinder and mo a lot of people might not know how to do that, but it's fairly simple you just have to have the compression tester itself and then you take the spark plugs off, put it, put the screw the compression tester in, and pull it over a few times with the throttle wide open, and it'll tell you how much compression each cylinder has. They, you, you usually want to have each cylinder to be um, fairly similar. So if it has, say, 90 PSI in one cylinder, you don't want the other one to have 40. That's not a good sign. But if they all have 90, if they all have 100, I'll have 120, whatever it is around. So I would say, sorry, I'm kind of going off here, but anywhere from 80 to 90-ish, to 120 is a good range for a two-stroke. Four strokes are different, but that's a good range for a two-stroke. Uh, it'll run in any of those, but I think if it's below 80, I would say it probably needs a top-end rebuild, and those can get expensive. But other things, really, you might want to check the oil, you might want to check all the fluids, make sure they've all been kept up. If the oil is gone and it's been, and he says he's been using it, that might be a bad sign because that might be that might mean that he's been running it on no oil so the engine might not last too much longer but as long as the fluids are higher and um yeah that should be good that's all i can really think of right now make sure you check all those things over before buying a used snowmobile and uh yeah i hope you, this video was helpful to you guys and please go check out the other videos on my channel and if you're not subscribed already please do subscribe and we will see you guys next time